a new project dropping soon. Can you tell us about, in a New York minute, your character and what drew you to this project? It's a new project and it's an old project because it was actually filmed in 2017. It's been through a lot. It's been through a whole bunch of posts. Um, uh, it's been through a good part of a pandemic and now it's <laughs> finally going to be the light of day. In a New York minute, I can sum it up simply as it's a film about, about wanting others to see you as you see yourself. And so um, all of the characters, I think they revolve on some type of that, um, that theme from a different angle. And my character, I play a character named David and he is a struggling screenwriter. His dreams are bigger than his, his, um, you know, his, his skills can actualize. And he is a kind of a fatal romantic. But, you know, New York is a melting pot and we've seen other projects that are based and set in this city, but never depicted in this way, which has been one of the missions uh, as for you as an artist to bring more authentic and diverse storytelling to the forefront. Why do you think the industry is taking so long to get here? And is there an added sense of responsibility being that representation? Uh, thanks for recognizing that. Uh, this is this is a large part of what I'm about because yeah. I, I just... I, yeah, I find I find meaning in these things, and I uh, I think a part of storytelling and film um, a huge benefit is to let people see from the perspective of what's portrayed on screen in a way that they haven't felt or or thought about before. Um, and for me, this act, this project actually left me with a really deep impression, and be empathetic toward the struggles of um, Asian. Asian Americans and also Asian women, especially. Yeah. Not the, well, the character I play isn't that great to women. So, um, <laughs> it's, it's a little backward lesson, a little backward lesson for me. But um, at the heart of it, I think David still wants to, um, he sees himself in a different way than society sees him. Yeah. And from, from what he feels like he should be able to attain. And sometimes that can turn toxic. Um, and then you can explore through the other characters in the film how that can actually help you uh, become a better person. The film's kind of tragic in the end, not to give away, <laughs> but uh, you've seen it, right? So, yeah, you know. I've seen it, yeah. yeah. You know, one, of, one of the central themes of the film is overcoming struggles, like you were just saying, and your character is grappling between his sense of freedom and the woman that he loves. How did you create the space for yourself to dive into his story arc? Having this film been done, a few years back when I was a younger version of myself, I think that that helped a lot. I think I've, you know, I've explored a lot of different types of relationships and, and just trying to crack the code. I think it's a lifelong game to see how, how we can actually make it work. Yeah, so I, I, could, I could very much see myself going down that road uh, at some point in my life. Hopefully I'm a better person now. I still take myself to school every single day and I have to, but um, yeah, it's kind of, um, a cautionary tale. I've seen a couple of interviews that your castmates have done and there was this initial misconception uh, as it was making its way through the festival circuit that it would only appeal to the Asian community, which it definitely does, but it's also a universal story. How do we change this perspective? What do you hope audiences take away after they see it? That's a great point, Kevin. I, th I think that's precisely what I hope the audience takes away from it because uh, the stories aren't typically the Asian the Asian stories, you, you immediately have your mind how how stereotypes and and um, the character the caricatures in media portray the Asian Americans. It's a gamut of stories, right? It's a yeah. it's a gamut. It's a compilation of three different stories that intertwine. So um, in that, I think you can feel the complexity of the characters and the the conflicts that they're struggling with is very very different. Um, but I think the central theme that the story um, shows and that I think as as um, as Asians, Asian Americans, Asian Canadians, Asian whatevers, just with that people who have tried to cross that cultural barrier that we can relate with. And that is that we we aren't we aren't seen. We just aren't seen. Right. I think a lot of the um, the leading women that tell that uh, that portrays the protagonist of these stories feel precisely that way, that they're always unseen. This is a great time for this movie to come out. Yeah. Um, but I think if it had come out shortly after it filmed, it would have been on the vanguard 
of um, more recognition and more diversity, especially for women. You've worked on projects of all sizes. What is it about independent filmmaking that excites you as a, a creative? Uh, it's great. Uh, one, one thing I'll tell you about independent filmmaking is that when you watch the film afterwards, it's filled with Easter eggs for yourself. Um, so I, I wish we had like more, I wish I had more B-rolls um, because independent filmmaking, sometimes it's, uh, it's, sometimes it's dangerous, mm. but it's also exciting. Um, it's surprising. Uh, I've met some of my best friends on this movie. I just came up from LA. Uh, I drove up from LA just last week, arriving in Vancouver yesterday. And I, in LA, I, I, I always stay with the line producer on this movie. Her, her name is Rachel Liu. She's, she's a powerhouse. And she basically say, came in and saved the movie. She, she got the call to do this movie um, because we're in trouble on her flight to her honeymoon. And then she said, okay, um, but I'm gonna enjoy my honeymoon for a few days and then I'll come to New York and work with you guys. And so she, the day she finished her honeymoon, she took a red eye to New York, um, straight from the airport, showed up on set and just said, I'm your new line producer. And everyone hugged her because um, it seems she's like she was like the messiah appearing in person. <laughs> so it's like independent films. You have these, you have these uh, really nuanced stories that occur in the process of making the film. And then also the other thing about independent films is a lot of times the crew gets a chance to act. Like for example, um, in the story uh, portrayed by Angel as the main character. The director that was directing her in the scene with, with um, the bridge, and I won't go further than that to give away spoilers, that was actually our producer. And look, he's a character in himself. So um, whatever you see on screen, that's like, I think that's about, you know, 80% him. Speaking of that collaborative nature, there's a great chemistry that comes off the screen between you and the entire cast. How are you all able to, to build that bond? For films like this, where we're trying to tell our own story, Mm -hmm. um, and that is the story of Asian Americans, um, Asian Canadians, overseas Asians. It's really easy to bond because no matter what our life experience is, we still always struggle um, have, and have been challenged by that cultural gap that we somehow have to overcome and, and the, the per perception of, um, this might be a strong word, but of dehumanization. And by that, I mean, to see us as less, less complex than who we are. So to be able to get a script like this and tell a complex story, um, especially from a vantage point that we don't often see, it's really easy for us just to get behind. And plus like um, the, the food, the constant Asian food that we had for lunch really helped. It really is a, it really is a bridge um, for strangers to get together. Speaking of complex stories, you're also one of the stars of the CW's Kung Fu. And one of the central themes uh, within that series is about creating your own path. How did you discover your passion for acting and storytelling? Um, I always say that I don't think I discovered my passion for acting or storytelling. I think people lose their passion as we get more encultured into society as we um, are told that we have to follow by the rules of society. Um, and for example, I think every single kid has done uh, a role playing, put on a towel to pretend to be Superman, played house, um, played doctor, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, um, and even people that still do cosplay at different con conventions these days, they, they're acting in just a different form. Um, it might not be their day job, they might have to do something else from day to day, but I think storytelling and acting is a fundamental way for us to, and personally for me, to explore different aspects of myself. And Kung Fu is your first studio TV show, and you've been learning more and more about this character as the series has gone on. How much of an adjustment has that been for you as a creative uh, and the way that you approach this character? Uh, super interesting because it's such a it's such a long process. I have so yeah. much time with the character, and also I never know where the character is going. Um, as you, you, if you saw the first season, you'll know it left yeah. left out on a cliffhanger, and I didn't know whether um, I would be back after that. And that's always an ongoing discussion between um, between the studio, myself, and also how much you guys 
like him as a character. So by the mere fact that I keep coming back means there's still something to be told. Um, I think as it goes on, things will become more and more interesting for Kerwin um, at the end of the show. And uh, I'll just leave it at that. But also in TV, I think it's taught me a lot about just how to work, um, what working on a film set really means. I got a chance to shadow a director. Yeah. And I think really writing and directing is the, is the, is like the seed, the core of storytelling. So um, if we want to, if we want to tell our stories in the way that it, we want it to be told, then we have to start from there. 100%. That's a perfect segue to this next question. But like you were just saying, this season, you've had the opportunity to shadow one of the directors. Could we possibly see you directing and writing in the future? What did you learn from that experience that you've now been able to apply to your career on screen? So whether or not uh, I can see directing in my future, I think it's, uh, it's I, I really think it's inevitable. I think a few things in life are inevitable. And I think this is one of them. Um, and in terms of what did I learn from that shadow experience? I, I learned a, a lot. I learned probably more than my entire acting career up to this point um, because I learned how, and look, this is not to say I, 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 I love my job and I want more jobs. And I think actors, I think being an actor is a very important job because your face is on the screen. Um, your, your face represents everything um, the audience uh, empathizes with the character. It's their way, it's their doorway into the story. But having said that, um, shadowing the director, you see things behind the scenes and you start realizing how sometimes, not every time, and let me just speak for myself because I see myself in that situation, how much of a clown actors can be because we're kind of like, we're in the trailers and everyone's busy, hustling, working, doing their job, concentrating 100%. Um, and we don't, we never see that because we're away prepping uh, for the scene, whether it's lines or whether it's emotionally. And then you get invited on and actors usually, there's some ego involved in being an actor. And usually there's like this flamboyant, boisterous air that comes with coming onto the scene. And they think that they're, I think as an actor, that I'm the center of the focus of the whole thing, not realizing there's been a universe of preparation that's built around what you're about to do. Well said, and you know, Kerwin shows his most vulnerable self when he's with Jalan and vice versa. What has it been like getting to collaborate with Yvonne to bring the different shades of your character to life? Have you ever spoken to Yvonne? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Done... <laughs> and so, and what, what do you think? Pretty different or about the same? Completely different. Complete night and day different. Yeah, yeah it's really interesting working with Yvonne. Um, and I always have a good time. I think one of the best days I had on Kung Fu was uh, during fight day in episode three, because what you see on screen was, was the tension and the fighting. And what you see off, what you would have seen off screen was just nonstop laughter and having fun. Um, we always gel really well together with the stunt team. Um, they're always there looking out for us, um, showing us the right ways to move, um, how to portray the scene, how to portray the fights pro properly. Um, and Yvonne, like myself, were just pretty receptive to that. I'll, I will say one thing I felt bad about them is during the rehearsal for that scene, and this is a testament to how uh, easygoing and, and nice of a person she is, is during the rehearsal for that scene, I fully, and she'll deny this, but I swear this on my grave, that I felt like I fully backfisted her right across the face during rehearsals. And I felt so bad. Um, but she's tough as nails. She just backed off, um, shook it off, and went right back to rehearsal. Speaking of episode two or three, uh, two or three, it marks a new sense of freedom for your character, freedom from his family, freedom from Zalan. But I get the sense that this isn't the last that we've seen of Corwin. Is there anything that you can tease about his future? And now with the season three pickup, congratulations, by the way. Is there an aspect of him that you want to dive further into in the in the, in the next season? Thanks. Thanks for, um, for saying that. And uh, they only got a season three because 
of people like you that are watching. Um, it's it's still kind of sad to me that it is, I think it's the only show on network TV that portrays a full Asian cast and Asian yeah. family. Um, so it, it's really precious to me. And in terms of what Kerwin is going to do after this, um, I think I can only say that it only gets more twisted from here. Great teaser. And speaking of the, the fans of the show, they've expressed through social media how Kung Fu has made them feel seen and represented. What has it been like getting to share that experience with them through social media? And does, it, does that bring a different weight to this project? It's It's been great to be able to share with fans because I think Kung Fu represents several things. I think it re represents um, how we are, um, in our lived experience, but I also think it represents what we dream. Um, because to be to be very honest, I I didn't grow up in a family like the Shen family. Mm. I didn't have these wonderful family feasts just just for breakfast. You know, I didn't have a supportive and funny father and a loving mother who are just understanding, right? But I think it's a good model for us to um, aspire towards because you know, it's really wonderful um, to, I, I could imagine it would be really wonderful to grow up in a family like that. And I think that's a part of, that is a part of, um, that is part of escapism fantasy is that we always know deep in our hearts what appeals to us and what we want. Um, so I think that gives, you know, our community a lot of hope. Um, and otherwise, it's just really interesting hearing other people pick up what actually connected with them and sharing what connects with me personally.